We'll start with the mindset of Microstock, how to set yourself up for success, the right frame of mind to be in as you approach this, how to decide what you're going to create. You might already know you're a photographer or an illustrator, but there's a lot of different choices out there. You don't have to pick just one. There's a lot of potential for you to dive into different areas, so I'll explore what those are. What are the best agencies you should be uploading to? There's a number of agencies, but there's really only a handful that have a high payoff. I'll show you which ones that I upload to and which ones I think are the best ones for you to dive into. And then how much money can you make? What are the earning commission structures at the major agencies? So you can see what the potential is. And then how to apply to the agencies. Each one has its own requirements, application process. I'll share how to get through that system as well as sharing the links that you can follow to get right over there and start applying. Next, what are the hottest selling topics? This is a key part of the course to make you understand there's something called high commercial value and low commercial value. You gotta focus on the things that customers actually wanna buy and we'll cover what those topics are. How to keyword your content. Again, a critical part of the course. You've gotta make sure that once you've got great content out there, that customers can actually find it and come and download it so you can earn money. What are the file requirements at the major agencies? Each one may have some different criteria. You need to know what that is before you create and upload. And then how to upload that content. There's different systems at the major agencies and we'll cover some of those key step-by-step -step processes that you'll be following. How to set the best daily routine. Now, Microstock requires a lot of discipline. You need to be consistent with your workflow. How to set a workflow up is what we'll be covering in this step. And finally, how can AI help? You might have heard a lot recently about AI programs like MidJourney replacing photographers and illustrators someday, but I believe that AI is a tool that can help you succeed in Microstock. You just know the right ways to go about it, and I'm going to share some of that toward the end of the course. But first, a little bit about me. I've been doing Microstock for 15 years. I've uploaded about 1,000 to 2,000 images or videos per year, and that's getting into that again, that workflow the discipline of uploading about four assets every day. And today, after the 15 years of doing this, I've got about 20,000 images and 6,000 videos at the major agencies. Not all of the agencies have my full portfolio, but again, one of some of those agencies that I think are the highest priority, they have my full portfolio of work because that's where I've prioritized and that's where I get the biggest return on investment. Now, what a lot of people want to know is how much can you earn? I've earned $1.5 million over the course of 15 years. That equates to about $100,000 a year. And how did I get there? Here are some of the major agencies where I've earned quite a bit over time. These are probably my top three. And again, this is well over half of my total of $1.5 million over the years. These are the agencies that I'm going to dive into in greater detail to show how you can build up portfolios there. So just a quick plug here. I encourage you to sign up for my YouTube channel, Microstock Life. So you can see my latest earnings, the hottest selling topics from month to month, and a lot more. I've also set up a newsletter that's going to give you regular news, tips, and tools on how to help you sell more at Microstock. It includes my Microstock agency report card to tell you what agencies are performing the best these days. So I want to talk about what I call the Microstock mindset. And that's what I think is the right approach to really have some success at Microstock and not fall into some typical myths or things that are negative thoughts that really could prevent you from making headway here. Now, Microsoft's been around for a while, and if you're just getting into it today, there is a lot of competition. You do need to keep that in mind. But you might be thinking with so many people creating content and now AI creating a lot of content you're competing with, can you still make money with Microsoft today? And the answer is yes, you can still make money today. You just have to be smarter than your competition. There are a lot of people getting into Microstock. There's more doing Microstock than ever before, but you just need to be smarter than them. What I've seen with a lot of new Microstockers, they just don't understand what sells, what's the right way to go about it. They copy other people's work that might have been selling a few years ago. They're not staying up on what are the latest trends. I'm going to cover what are the best ways to be doing that so that you don't fall into those same traps. You just have to make sure you're staying ahead of your competition. You're doing things better than them. And there's ways to do that. That's part of what this course is about. Another trap that I almost fell into early on was being down on myself and thinking, I'm not the best person out there at this. There's others with much greater skills than I have. I shouldn't really do this. There's not really a chance for me to succeed. And that's just wrong. You don't necessarily have to be the best artist out there. 
You just have to be better at figuring out what customers want and making sure that your work stands out from the competition. I am far from the best photographer, best illustrator, best videographer out there. There are people who have much better skills than I have. You just have to be able to think like a business person, put yourself in the mind of the customer, figure out what it is that is a demand out there that you can meet that maybe people out there with even better skills than you have. Maybe they just aren't meeting them or maybe they're not meeting them well. Maybe they're not keywording correctly. You're going to have the skills by the end of this course. You're going to know what it takes to beat the competition who maybe has better skills than you and have a good chance of success at Microstock. Just a quick story from my early days at Microstock. I went into a forum and asked a person who was one of really the leading Microstockers at the time what he thought of my skills and, and what advice he would give me. He looked at my work and said, you're not ready. You're not good enough. Wait a while. Get better. Then maybe try it later. Now, I didn't listen to him. I said, I'm just going to keep doing the best I can and grow along the way. I'm glad I didn't listen to that bad advice and just plowed ahead because I grew over time. I got better over time. But what I had at the beginning was the understanding that Microstock is a business and I needed to figure out what are the hot selling topics and what are the, what are the ways that my work could stand out from everybody else's. And it worked. So let's talk about what are the different types of art that you can create and submit to the agencies. Let's talk about still images, the various type of still images that you can submit. Photography, of course, vector illustrations. These would be things created with programs like Adobe Illustrator. 3D rendered illustrations created with programs like Maya or Blender. Blender is a great free program that you can teach yourself. It's not that difficult to pick up, but something to consider down the road. And AI generated illustrations. We're going to go through that toward the end of this course to see how can you create some AI art online and submit them to the agencies? In terms of video, again, there's different types of video you could submit. There's footage, that's traditional, just real life videography. 2D animations, these would be like the hand-drawn type of artwork that you can animate using programs that Adobe has and other software packages allow you to do. And then 3D rendered animations, again, like I mentioned on the photo or still images slide, there are packages out there that let you take something that you might have modeled for a still image and now create video animations as well. I want to emphasize that you don't necessarily have to pick just one of these areas to upload to the agencies. They don't make you decide, I'm a photographer, I'm an illustrator, and that's all I'm going to submit. You can try your hand at any and all of these and see how can you build up a varied portfolio that lets you make sure that you're meeting different buyers' needs in different ways. Don't limit yourself. Now, it's important to understand the concept of editorial content. Different agencies accept it in different ways. They define it in different ways. In general, if you're shooting an image of something that's recognizable, a brand product, say you want to include your iPhone or other product with a brand name on it in an image, and different agencies treat them in different ways. Here's a look at how Shutterstock treats editorial. Shutterstock, consider something editorial if you don't have permission from every recognizable person in the image in the form of a model release and we'll go over model releases a little later. There's some other criteria here. A big one is no visible trademarks, company names or logos must be present in the context. If it turns out any of these criteria are the case for the image or video that you're submitting, Shutterstock requires you to submit that as editorial. That restricts how the customers can use it once they download it. They can't put it onto an item that they're going to sell. They can include it in a news item, a newspaper, magazine, website. Again, just as it sounds, it's considered editorial. Now, for Adobe Stock, they call it illustrative editorial. They define it as conceptual imagery designed to illustrate articles on current events and newsworthy topics. And for illustrative editorial Adobe Stock, they don't accept images that feature recognizable people, restricted events, tight crops of trademarked material, digitally created manipulated versions of trademarked logos or other brand content. So just be careful if you're submitting this kind of editorial that you understand Shutterstock's, Adobe Stock's, and the other agencies' rules on it or it will get rejected. So we're starting to talk about the various agencies. So let's dive in and talk about which ones are the best ones that you need to be uploading to. I'm gonna focus in this course on the agencies that I believe have the best return on value for you, the, where I've had the best ROI and where I think you should be focusing your efforts as well. So again, focusing on the highest return on investment, there are really only a few agencies these days that are giving a good volume of downloads, bringing in a good amount of traffic to give your content the best chance of getting sold and making you some significant income. 
There have been a number of agencies that have sprung up over the past 15, 20 years. Most of them have fallen by the wayside. They had nice little burst of activity. I uploaded a large portfolio to them. And over time, they've just stagnated and aren't worth my time in contributing anymore. And I don't recommend others do as well. So we're going to focus today on the ones that are the highest performers. There are another few agencies that I would consider mid-tier or mid-level. They still have a regular, consistent amount of earnings for me, and their uploading system isn't too painful that I still make them part of my regular rotation. It's worth the time and investment. And finally, there are some low-level agencies, the ones that I consider the lowest performing of all the agencies out there. I don't cover them here because I'm not submitting to them on a regular basis, and I can't in good conscience recommend you do as well. So looking at what are the best-selling agencies for me today in MicroStock, the top performing agencies would be Adobe Stock for both images and video. Adobe is my top performer for image sales earnings and probably my number two for video. Several years ago, Adobe purchased one of the top tier agencies from the early days of Microsoft called Photolia and incorporated into its creative cloud suite of products and made it very easy for customers to download images and videos for their projects, which helped make it one of the powerhouse Microsoft agencies today. Shutterstock used to be, for a lot of people, the number one agency. It was for me for a long time. It's really fallen the last couple of years. I don't earn quite as much as I did in the past on Shutterstock. It's still a very high volume company in terms of customers and number of downloads and decent amount of earnings for me every month. So it's still well worth uploading to. And then Storyblocks, that's just video only. It is number one for me in terms of video downloads. The decent agency, they have a unique member subscriber program where you get a portion of the earnings in their partner pool every month. I'll cover that more in a moment when I go over my earnings of Storyblocks. As I mentioned a moment ago, there are still some mid-level or lower tier agencies that are worth uploading to. I get regular downloads at a few of these agencies and their uploading system isn't too painful to upload your content to and submit. That would include deposit photos for both images and video. However, I tried doing some video there and it just didn't perform well for me. So I really stick, stick with them for images only. And then Canstock Photo, they accept images and video as well. However, I just upload images there. They haven't been a big performer for me for video. So I stopped some time ago. It's not a high performer by any means, but I get a regular stream of downloads and earnings there. Now, other agencies that I'm not mentioning in this video, just aren't worth the effort, in my opinion. I haven't found them to be performers for me. Your time is better spent doing more researching on the market, seeing what customers want, and creating more content, quite frankly. You might think, well, I'm building my portfolio. I want to give it as much chance to reach customers as possible. I'll put them on every agency that accepts them. It's not worth the time. Like I said, they don't really have much of a customer base at all. You're not going to get any earnings to speak of. It's not worth the time. Spend that time doing research and creating content. Now, I have a lot more information on agencies in my agency report card you can get when you sign up for my newsletter. If you follow the link here, you can actually see it and then sign up to get future news and updates and other resources and tools that will help you on your Microsoft journey. So one of the biggest things everyone wants to know about Microsoft is how much money can you make at it? And each agency has its own commission structure. This is Adobe Stocks. So you can see here that they do 33% royalties for images based on the credit package that customers buy into. You can see here customers can buy three credits a month, 10 credits, 25 credits a month, and then you get 33% on whatever download rate that the customer has at Adobe Stock. Similar for video, 35% royalties, and these are the different credit per month packages. I'll show you the earnings that I make specifically on my portfolio in just a moment. So here's a look at my earnings at Adobe Stock, just a sample screen from my dashboard. It shows 5,200 downloads. They tell you the date of a particular download, a thumbnail image for it, and they mix the photos and videos, illustrations, all in one screen, all lumped together here. You can see I've blurred out what my images are, uh, but you can see that these were subscription, custom. They give you a little bit specific so you can see what the revenue breakdown was and then the amount you made per image download or video download. And here's another screenshot from Adobe Stock. I wanted to point out one of my video downloads. You can see the type of earnings you can expect to make from a video. This particular video download earned me about $30 in earnings. Now I'm earning in total about $1,500 to $25 per month at Adobe Stock. It fluctuates throughout the year. You have better months and worse months. 
There is the summer slump. Typically, you'll go down a little bit then as people are on vacations, schools are out, people just aren't working as much. So your downloads will be falling accordingly. And then toward the end of the year, around the holidays, they also dip. But the better months of the year, I'm earning about $2,500 a month. My portfolio size of the Adobe stock is 22,000, a little higher than 22,000 images, and then 6,500 videos. Let's take a look at Shutterstock. Here is their commission structure. It's all based on levels. You can see level one, you'll earn 15%. That's if you have up to 100, 100 downloads in the calendar year. And then you could get up to level six at 40%. That's if you have 25,000 or more image downloads in a calendar year. Now, the tricky thing about Shutterstock is they do a big reset every January 1st, unfortunately. You'll rise throughout the year from level one, two, three, four. By the end of the year, you might be doing pretty nicely there, 30, 35% commissions. January 1st, you get knocked down to level one, 15% commissions. It's a sore spot for a lot of contributors. Shutterstock introduced this a few years ago. No contributors happy about this, as you can imagine. And it's one of the reasons why my earnings at Shutterstock have fallen quite a bit in the last couple of years. Here's a look at videos. Again, similar situation, level one through six, 15% to 40% earnings. And here's a sample screen for me from January 2023. This is just wanted to show you how they break down your dashboard of earnings. They will show you total downloads and then what type of image downloads you had, what type of video downloads you had. Now, I'm earning between $1,200 and $1,500 a month at Shutterstock. My portfolio size there is very similar to Adobe Stock. They're almost identical. They have my full portfolio of more than 22,000 still images and 6,500 videos. Now let's take a look at Storyblocks. If you look at their website for contributors, this is how they try to describe what you earn. And I'm not even going to attempt to describe this. I frankly don't understand it myself. It's a very complicated formula of members paying a fee to subscribe, members download the video content, they Points are assigned to you, it gets calculated with the partner program, and it's a pretty complicated formula that I've never understood. And it doesn't help much that when they show you in your dashboard what your earnings are, they don't even attempt to show you, here's a number of downloads, here's how much you made per download. They simply say, here are the top clips, top categories. They do show you your monthly total that you're expected to make by the end of the month. It fluctuates throughout the month. It can be much higher or lower at the end of the month than you saw in the early days of the month. What is helpful is they can tell you what your top categories were. So it gives you a decent idea of what you should be creating more and uploading more for Storyblocks. These are some of my top performing categories, motion backgrounds, business, professions, colors, news, abstract, countdown, technology. So in terms of my total earnings at Storyblocks, I'm making between $1,500 and $10,000 per month. Earlier in 2023, they changed their formula in terms of how they distribute earnings to their contributors. And that's why I've had such a big fluctuation in my monthly totals there. My portfolio size for videos at Storyblocks is more than 6,500. It's roughly the same portfolio I have at Adobe Stock and Shutterstock. So let's take a look at how to apply to the agencies. At Adobe Stock, you have to be at least 18 years old. You have to set up an Adobe ID if you don't already have one. If you already are an Adobe subscriber, if you already have an Adobe ID, you can connect it to a contributor account. You submit a tax form, agree to their terms and conditions. You submit release forms on any type of images that have recognizable people or property, and then follow their laws, rules, guidelines. Shutterstock, here's a look at the screen where they ask you to sign in, create a new account, enter your display name, email address. They will send you a confirmation via email. Then they will ask you to enter some basic information to get your account set up and allow you to start submitting content. Here's a look at what it takes to get approved. You need to submit several photos, JPEGs, EPS illustrations, or video clips for submission, and they have to meet their submission criteria. The content will be reviewed by their expert team of reviewers, they say, and when the first piece of content is approved, you're all set, you're ready to start submitting your file without limitations. Now at Storyblocks, here's a look at the screen that you'll see when you're trying to join as a member. And here's a look at what Storyblocks tells potential contributors that their process is easy. They wanna make sure that you're submitting content that's high quality and it meets the demands of members. If you meet both those criteria, they'll send you an offer to join the partner program. It's worth noting here review time that it can be within a few days 
can take up to a few weeks or more. Now we're getting to what is probably the most important part of this course, and that's being able to identify what are the hottest selling topics you need to focus on creating content and uploading. Understanding what HCV means. It's a term you'll see over and over again as you go on your Microsoft journey. HCV means high commercial value. That means a customer actually wants to go and download what you have created. It meets a need that they have, so therefore it has commercial value. Your content will likely be used to help someone else make money. People aren't going to be downloading images and videos just because they like how they look. They're downloading them usually to, because it meets a business need for them. They're trying to convey something to their own customers or their own audience, and your content, your videos, your images need to meet that need. So what I always like to do is imagine the content I'm creating appearing in a presentation, a TV commercial, on a product package or a print advertisement. How will what I'm creating help the customer that's potentially going to download my image or download my video? How will it help them connect with their customer, communicate a message? And if what I'm creating doesn't seem to fit that description in my mind as I'm doing it, I need to move on to something else. So on the flip side, what is not high commercial value? So some examples of this would be your family vacation snapshots. You might be thinking, oh, I've got all these great photos on my camera. I went to a nice trip with my family to the beach. I got some nice shots of sunset. I'll uh, upload those and I'll make some money on the MicroStock agencies. Unless you have really spectacular scenic shots of little scene locations around the world, you need to consider that just about everything has been shot and has been uploaded and customers are buying it. There are people who are expert travel photographers scenic and, and landscape photographers, you don't want to be competing with them. You need to do something that's unique and your snapshots from your family holiday vacation is probably not going to cut it. Photos or videos of your pets. Frankly, there are animal expert photographers and videographers who have been at Microsoft for many, many years. And unless you have the most spectacular dog or cat photo or video that's ever been taken, it's probably not worth your time trying to upload that and trying to displace the position of the experts who have been uploading this content for many years. The same is true for random everyday flowers and plants that you might see as you're going on a walk in the park. Keep in mind that there are expert plant vegetation photographers that have already dominated the market at all the major agencies. Rainbows, clouds, things you look up, think are pretty in the sky. Don't waste your time taking photos of those and uploading them. And finally, abstract, or as I would say, artsy-fartsy shots of just things around your home that you think, oh, there's a cool angle, interesting lighting here. It's probably not something that's going to be high commercial value. Let's focus on topics that actually customers need. And what are those topics? Business concepts have always sold very well for me. Again, think of yourself as the customer. You're trying to convey a message to your coworkers, to an audience of customers, or other people that you're trying to sway with a message. Growth and success is a top one. Interviewing and hiring. Financial topics such as inflation, loans, investments. What are the hot headlines that you're seeing right now in terms of the financial world? Are, is inflation a big topic? Right now in 2023 it is. Interest rates are high. These are things that are big news and trends that a lot of businesses out there are trying to incorporate these messages into what they're telling their audiences, potential customers, and that they have a good solution for fighting inflation, for fighting high interest rates. And if you can create the right images or videos to help them tell that story, you'll get downloaded. New technologies have always been hot in the 15 years that I've been doing Microstock, and they're constantly changing. You need to stay up on the news, follow trends in software, artificial intelligence, robotics, biotechnology. And then topical challenges or issues that come up from time to time and you see in the news or you see at different workplaces. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is a top one in workplaces these days. Healthcare, environment, things that are challenges in people's lives. There are businesses out there trying to offer solutions to these, trying to attract new customers. They need images and videos to help them tell their story. Now, most of the agencies are eager to tell you, this is the content that we need. They want their contributors to be creating more of the things that their customers want. Many of the agencies have areas of their website or their blogs where they detail, this is what our customers are looking for right now, and you should really take note of this and create content on these topics that's unique, that nobody else has created, they haven't met that need yet, so pay attention to these clues the agencies are giving you. Here's an example of this at Adobe Stock. They post this in their contributor section to give you clues on what you should be creating. Some examples are pointing out here in this screenshot, slow living, mobile connected workplaces, 
Cars Made for Adventure. So they don't have a lot of content on these particular niche topics. Why don't you create some? Shutterstock is also telling you what they want you to create. Here are some examples from their contributor section. Parenting in healthcare, authentic moving. So mobility issues are always hot. They need more images like this, more videos. Create those for Shutterstock. And when you are creating specific content that Adobe or Shutterstock is asking for, you'll find that the, the customers of the other agencies are also looking for that kind of content. Storyblocks also has a part of its website dedicated to showing you what they need. Here's some examples recently, people, templates, nature. So create more content like this. Now we're into another very important part of the course, and that's all about keywording and how you're going to make your images and videos stand out from the rest of your competition at the agencies. Many of the agencies have a limit of 50 keywords you're allowed to tag for your images and videos. It's a good idea to aim for 50. Do not go over, obviously, you'll, you'll get rejected, but you also don't want to spam. Every word or phrase you add to your list of keywords has to be representative of your image or video. You don't want to be putting things in there just because you think it's going to attract a lot of traffic from customers. It has to be descriptive of what you're actually uploading. Now, Adobe Stock tells us as contributors that the keywords that we put in the beginning of our keyword list of 50, if we're putting in 50, the top 10 or so are going to be the ones that get extra weight. So their customers type in phrases or, or words that they're searching for. The ones that have them in the top 10 will be the ones that more likely come up as search results and get better download counts. So Adobe is my top earning agency for images. I make sure I follow this guideline for all the uploading I do at the agencies when it comes to keywording. So as you're building your list of keywords to use for a particular photo or video, a great tool to use for that is a Google spreadsheet or other Excel spreadsheet, other type of sheet that allows you to have a formula in a cell that tracks a number of words in the keyword cell that you're putting together. And I'll show you an example of that in just a moment. Another great thing to do is to be looking at other images or videos that are like yours. See what are the top selling ones out there currently in the marketplace. See what keywords they use. Now, don't just copy and paste those keywords and use them as your own. You have to make sure that what you're putting in for keywords are descriptive of your content, but you might find clues into what are the most top selling images using for keywords and where appropriate, add them to your list. And finally, AI is a great resource to help you in keywording. And I'll show you that when we cover the AI section at the end of the course. So I wanted to walk you through some of the steps that I follow when I'm keywording an image. I brought up an example here. So here we have an image of an older couple sitting on a park bench holding hands, and we're going to keyword this image as if we're preparing to upload it to the agencies. So as I mentioned, one of the things I'd like to do is look up what are some of the hottest selling images like mine using as their keyword. So we're going to look, go to Adobe Stock and look up older couple sitting on park bench holding hands. If I sort by downloads to find which ones have been downloaded the most, find something that's similar to my image and find out what did they use for keywords. Looking at this one, you can find their keywords. I like to click on the actual file. And then here's the list of their keywords. Click on view all. And this is what they've used. So I make note of the ones that really are good representative keywords for my actual image, because it's likely that the customers who have been downloading this in great volume use some of these terms to pull it up. And I wanna make sure I'm not missing any of those and missing out on potential downloads. As I pointed out a moment ago, I like to use a Google spreadsheet that helps me track how many keywords that I have. So I'm not surpassing the limit of 50. And you can see I've already pre-populated the cell here with the keywords I'd like to use, separated by commas and spaces. You can see this cell here says 49. So I've got one under the limit of 50. It's being tracked by this formula that I'll paste into the notes for the video. So you'll be able to use it if you choose to do a spreadsheet on your own, and I highly encourage it. So I will copy this cell, go back into Photoshop, go to File, File Info, and here's where you're going to enter your metadata. You can enter a title, I'm going to say senior citizen, older couple, sitting on park bench, holding hands. And then for the description, it can be actually something very similar to the title, since I did put a very descriptive title in there, but you can add a few more words from the description. 
So a lot of the same words from the title, but I'm being a little more descriptive here since they allow you to do so. It's good for the search optimization within the agencies. And since I copied the cells when I was in the spreadsheet, I'm pasting them here and hitting OK, and then saving the file, and it's ready to upload. Now, each of the agencies has its own set of particular file requirements you need to make yourself aware of before you submit any content. Also, you need to keep in mind releases. They are required for people and property, anything that's identifiable. And each agency has its own required forms. Be sure to use these and upload them with each image or video that requires them. So for file requirements at Adobe Stock, this would be for photos and non-vector illustrations. They accept JPEGs. They want the color space as sRGB. You can set this in Photoshop or other image editing tool that you're using. The image resolution of your photo or non-vector illustration needs to be at least four megapixels up to 100 megapixels. If you're not familiar with how to calculate megapixels, you can think of an image that's 2,000 pixels wide by 2,000 pixels high. You multiply those together, you get 4 million pixels or 4 megapixels. Now, this is important to keep in mind when you are taking photos with a digital camera or even a smartphone. You make sure that you're getting a high enough resolution out of that camera to make sure that you get a resolution that's good enough for the agencies. A low or medium setting for resolution on a camera will often not give you enough of a resolution that's good enough for the agencies for uploading. And in terms of total file size, your image should not be more than 45 megabytes in size. For vector illustrations at Adobe Stock, they accept AI, that's Adobe Illustrator, EPS, and SVG formats only. Recommended artboard minimum is 15 megapixels. Maximum artboard, 65 megapixels. And again, maximum file size, 45 megabytes. Document color mode should be RGB. For video at Adobe Stock, you need a maximum duration of 60 seconds. No videos longer than one minute. Maximum file size, 3,900 megabytes. That's 3.9 gigabytes. That's a huge video. Hopefully, you're staying underneath that. For resolution, they accept 1920 pixels wide up to full DCI 4K, 4096 pixels wide and they accept the standard frame rates listed here. And for file types, these are the ones they accept at Adobe Stock. For Shutterstock, their file requirements for photos and non-vector illustrations, very similar to what you've seen at Adobe Stock. This is the actual screen from their website. I pasted it here for your reference. Again, very similar to what you've seen on Adobe Stock a moment ago. I won't go through every line, but here's the important information. For vector illustrations at Shutterstock, up to 100 megabytes, no less than 4 megapixels, no greater than 25, and must be compatible with Adobe Illustrator 8 or 10. Now let's go over video at Shutterstock. Again, I've copied and pasted the screenshot from their website. Very similar stats to what Adobe Stock asked for. You can pause the screen, jot down any of this you'd like, but there's the key information. I'm going to be including all the links to the requirements at the agencies in the video notes, so you can come back and reference those later. And finally, here are the video requirements at Storyblocks, fairly similar to what you've seen at Adobe Stock and Shutterstock, but make sure you check them out and make sure you upload content that meets these requirements or that will be rejected. So you've created content that you feel is high commercial value. You've keyworded it accurately using terms you think customers will use to search up an image or video like yours and you've made sure you've met the file requirements at the different agencies, now it's time to upload. One thing to keep in mind is not to upload too many images or videos that are similar to other ones that you've already uploaded or you're uploading in the same batch. Agencies, in particular Shutterstock, are very stringent when it comes to similar images and videos. They will reject them pretty quickly if they feel you've got something that is very similar to the particular image you're uploading now. Only upload the best images from a series. This is important, particularly when you're taking photographs or video. Let's say you did a photo shoot of an older couple sitting on a bench holding hands and you shot it from different angles. You got back, looked at all the photos. You have 10 that are great, all from slightly different angles. Just choose the one or two that are significantly different from each other that best represent that series. Upload those, not the entire series. So how to upload at Adobe Stock, looking at JPEGs first. You have a lot of different choices. You have their contributor portal, which I find very easy to use, but you could also use Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, Adobe Bridge. If you're uploading AI or EPS vector files, you can use their contributor portal or an SFTP client such as FileZilla. 
And finally, uploading video at Adobe Stock. You really need to be using an SFTP client. They don't have the ability to upload video through their web browser at this time. So I've logged into Adobe Stock and I'm ready to upload my image. I go to the upper right of the screen, click Upload. It gives me now the choice to either drag and drop my files here or open up a browser to my desktop. I'm choosing my senior couple holding hands image here. And because we embedded the title and the keywords in the metadata in Photoshop, it should come up already prepared in the platform here. And here is the image, I can select it. And on the right side of the screen, you'll see the key information. By default, Adobe has selected photos for me here. I need to change that to illustration because anything that's AI generated needs to be categorized as an illustration per the Adobe stock rules. For category, it pre-populated with people. And I think that is the best choice for this image. There's other choices here we could select from, but people probably is the most descriptive for it. Writing keywords titled in English, leaving that. Illustrative editorial, I'm not checking that because there are no visible brand names in this. It can be submitted for commercial use, so do not check that. And I do need to check for this image, I created it using generative AI, but otherwise you would not check it. Because I selected that here, I need to then check people and property are fictional. And now you see that it's pre-populated the metadata title and keywords that I entered with the image by saving it in Photoshop. And then at the top, finally, I can click on submit one file and my image will be submitted for review by Adobe Stock. So now I'll demonstrate the process for uploading to Shutterstock. I'm here at the upload screen in the contributor dashboard. I select select multiple files, grab my image. It happens very quickly. I hit next. And there it is. I can select it. And you can see it's very similar in terms of the things I need to check off here. I'm going to call it an illustration, commercial use, not editorial, because there's no image, there's no brand logos visible for category one. You can actually choose two. You don't have to, you can choose two. I'm going to choose people and I can choose a second one or I could leave it blank if I wanted to, but we'll say parks outdoor or in a park type setting. The title is already in place. The description that we entered in the metadata is there, and the keywords are there. Now, I'm not actually submitting this to Shutterstock. Shutterstock does not accept AI-generated content, so I'm actually deleting this, but I wanted to walk through the process for you so you understand it. And finally, I'll describe the process for uploading video content to Storyblocks. It is very simple, so I'm just showing you the steps on screen here. You would click on Upload Media at the top of the screen. When the file is uploaded, the files will appear under content, the ready to tag tab at the top of the screen. Just ensure the title is accurate and descriptive of the content. Add your keywords, save and submit. It's that simple. So we've gone through all the key steps in Microstock from figuring out what high commercial value is and what are the topics that will sell. So you can create those and attract customers, how to keyword those images, how to upload and submit them for review by the agencies. Now you need to think about how can you create a routine so that you're doing these steps every single day to start building your portfolio and increasing your chances of finding customers and getting downloads and earnings. You need to be consistent with your uploads in order to succeed. Number one, it grows your portfolio. It gives you that greater chance that you're going to attract eyeballs of customers, get those downloads and earnings. And number two, the agencies want to see that you're having a regular edition of fresh content in your portfolio to help drive visibility and sales to their agency. So how can you do this? To really succeed at Microstock, you should be aiming to submit at least a few pieces of new content daily. Find the best time of the day that works for you to devote and make it a routine. Can you create content while you're lying in bed? If you're doing illustrations, 3D rendering, that kind of work, or processing photos that you maybe took over the weekend, do it before you even start your day, do your uploading if you have a laptop. This is what I do each day to start the day before I start my normal work and it works best for me? Or maybe can you do it during your lunch hour? Do you work from home? Do you bring a laptop to work? Are you able to take a few minutes while you're eating lunch and make good use of that time? Or does it make sense for you to be doing it at night when all your other tasks are done, you can relax and focus that time on Microsoft? So just a little bit about my routine. It takes about 60 to 90 minutes a day. Like I said, 
I'm doing it before I get up in the morning. I create four to new assets daily, usually two images and two videos. Sometimes it's a mix of photography and illustrations using software to create these illustrations and animations. And I do all the keywording right there before I even get up and get out of bed. It's a good way to start the day. I feel like I've accomplished something before I even do my regular work for the day. Another thing to keep in mind is if you know you're going to be away for a period of time, it's a good idea to create some extra assets before you are taking a vacation or a work trip or something where it's going to prevent you from maintaining that consistency of uploading. You can create additional assets before your trip, actually upload them, but do not submit them until you actually leave. If you're able to log in while you're away from work, away from Microstock, from being able to work on it at home, have them in the queue and submit them a few a day while you're away, again, to keep up that consistency, the agency see that you're regularly submitting new content and not taking a big break that might actually punish you. So now we're at a part of the course that I think you can consider bonus content for the course, and that's all about AI and how it can help you succeed at Microstock. Now, there are two different camps when it comes to AI and what it means for the future of Microstock. Some people think it's going to destroy Microstock or at least take all earnings away from human contributors. And then there's folks like me who think it's a tool that actually can help you succeed, help you generate more income if you use it wisely. Now, AI generated images, there's a few different platforms for that. We're going to mention a couple of them here. Midjourney is a pretty popular one. There's tons of YouTube videos about people showing you some good prompts to use to create some cool images that you can upload and earn some money. I'll show you a few of the steps that I think are important to take if you're interested in doing that. Midjourney, it's important to know it's no longer offering a free trial. It did at the very beginning, but now you actually do have to pay a monthly fee to participate in Midjourney get some images that you can upload then to the Microstock agencies in particular, just a few that accept them, including Adobe Stock. As mentioned, it requires a paid subscription for commercial use if you intend to upload that, those images to the agencies. An alternative that we're gonna explore right now is called Blue Willow, very similar to Mid Journey, and I'll show you how to create some images there. So right now we're looking at the platform called Blue Willow. It's very similar to Mid Journey, if you're familiar with that AI platform. This invites you to use prompts at this field at the bottom using the term slash imagine. You select this with the word prompt and then you enter some words being very descriptive on what it is you're looking for. I actually use this platform to generate the image of the older couple sitting on a bench holding hands and I'll show you how I did that. In the prompt line at the bottom, I simply typed something to the effect of old couple sitting on bench holding hands, and you can get very much more descriptive than this, but just as an example, I will enter on that and you'll see what it comes up with. So it really took just a few seconds and it came up with these four images for me. I can click on it to zoom in and see if I like any of them. It did it in some different styles. The top two are photographic and the bottom two are illustrative. Now the second one I'd say loses out here because I asked for an older couple and they gave me a single guy on the bench in that image. Let's say this top left one is close to what I want, but I'd like to see some variations on that. What I can do is go back and click on variation of number one by clicking V1, and now it'll generate some that are close to that. So it's generated some additional versions of the image here. And let's say, okay, I like this one number two in the top. I'd like an upscaled version of that. I click on U2 and it gives me a higher resolution version of the image. So here is that higher resolution version. I can click on it, open in browser, zoom in. I actually do not like this image, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to save the image. So once you've created some images using AI platforms like Midjourney, like Blue Willow, you'll find that even the upscale version of them are not large enough in terms of resolution to be accepted at the agencies like Adobe Stock. You need to do some upscaling on them first. You can't simply open them up in Photoshop and change the image size. That's not truly going to upscale them. There are actually tools available for free online. Just Google search free AI image upscaler, and you'll find some that use AI technology to actually upscale it, fill in the detail so the images don't look distorted or pixelated. I came to this one called upscale.media. Upload your image here. I'll go to my downloads, found my old couple image. The image is uploading and it's going to upscale it for me. 
you can see here, it's given me a few different choices. I'm going to choose the AI upscaling twice as high to 4096 by 4096. That's going to be definitely good enough for uploading to the agencies. I click on download image. I can open up the file and zoom in quite a bit and see that it's a nice crisp image. Now, another way AI can help you out is through AI powered keyword. And I'll show you some steps there in a moment, but you can use one of the th three major platforms, ChatGPT, Bing Chat, or Google Bard, to actually give you some keywords you can upload with your images. You can simply ask the software, and I'll demonstrate in a moment, you can say something like, write 50 keywords separated by commas, all lowercase, describing X, describing the image or video that you'd like to generate some keywords for to help make sure you're not overlooking some words that your potential customers could use when searching for videos or images like yours. One thing to keep in mind, as I'll show you in a moment, that the platforms may give you some keywords that really aren't good, accurate descriptors for your image or video. Be sure to edit those out. You're only submitting keywords that are good descriptive words and phrases for your video, yet you're not spamming the systems. So here's a look at the steps of generating some keywords using the chat platforms like ChatGPT. I've logged in. It's easy to set up an account with ChatGPT. It's free. You can just type at the bottom in the prompt below. I'm going to type, write 50 keywords, comma separated, all lowercase. Otherwise, it will give you upper uppercase, and I prefer to upload keywords with lowercase words. And then describe the image for an older couple sitting on a park bench enjoying their retirement and their companionship. You can get as descriptive as you like here. The more descriptive, the better to make sure you're getting some keywords that are going to be accurate descriptors for your image or video. It's simple as that. They give me roughly 50 keywords. I actually took this step for the image that we used in the example earlier of the couple sitting on the bench. I copied and pasted those words into my spreadsheet containing my keywords. Of course, it's important to always review the list closely to make sure it's not giving you words that are inaccurate for the image or video you're uploading, but kind of cherry pick the ones that make sense, add it to your list of keywords, and now you've got a nice thorough word, list of words that maybe you wouldn't have thought of some of these, but they're good words that a customer might use to search up an image or video like the one you're uploading. So congratulations, you made it to the end of the course. I'm gonna share some just some final thoughts with you to move forward as you continue on your Microsoft journey. Think like a customer, make sure you're creating that high commercial value content that customers actually need, not just puppy dogs and rainbow shots, but actually business concepts, new technologies, things that are happening in the workplace like diversity, equity, and inclusion, things that actually customers need and could actually use in communicating messages to their audiences. Always be adapting and growing your skill sets. It's great if you're a photographer, if you're a videographer, you're having some success at Microstock, but look beyond that. Look for putting additional hooks in the water so customers who have a particular need, maybe they wanted something illustration-wise as opposed to photographic for a particular topic. You want to have as many pieces of content out there as possible on these high in-demand topics that give you the most chance to get some earnings in Microstock. And remember, again, you might not be the best artist out there. I certainly am not, but I've been able to make a good income at Microstock. You just need to be able to create assets a customer needs and make sure that they get seen by smart keywording and uploading strategies. And finally, I'm here to help you along your journey. I'm going to be continuing to upload new content to give you more insights from my learnings in Microstock, more earnings trends that I see at the major agencies. So subscribe to my YouTube channel, sign up for my newsletter in the links below, and good luck in Microstock.